Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. Today I want to demonstrate the captive nut technique with 3D printing. If you're not familiar with this technique, it's a way of combining two parts together in a way that's going to give you a lot more strength rather than just like a friction fit or screwing directly into the 3D printed plastic. It basically works by sandwiching a nut in between your printed part and then attaching another part by screwing into the threads of the nut. That way you have a metal on metal connection instead of metal on plastic. In the past, I've used this technique a lot for electronic enclosures, but today I'm gonna use it to attach a wheel to a motor. I'm building a small battle bot and I want the whole thing to be 3D printed. Well, everything besides the motors and electronics, of course. But here's what I have so far. I'm working on the wheel assembly and I've got the hub, which is gonna attach to the wheel uh, with these mounting holes. And then I also have the tire uh, and I'm planning to use TPU to print the tire. That's the flexible filament. Now, if you take a look at my hub here, you'll see this opening. That's where I'm going to put the hex nut and the shaft of the motor will go through the hole in the center. And then I'm going to have a set screw, which will screw down on this top hole, thread through the nut and bite on the motor shaft and that'll attach this whole assembly to that motor shaft so the entire thing will spin. Here's what it would look like with real metal parts. You can see that the set screw would thread through the metal hub and attach the motor shaft and then we would simply attach the wheel onto the hub. I 3D printed the hub just using PLA for now. It's just a prototype and I'm just kind of testing the concept. And then I attached the hex nut. You can see that I've got a pretty tight friction fit here, um, but I'm still gonna apply some glue here to both sides. This is just CA glue, um, just to give it some extra holding power. Next, I'll attach the motor and then thread the set screw through. I used an M3 nut, so I've got an M3 set screw here, and that's gonna go right through that hex nut and provide the holding power there to attach that shaft of the motor. I printed the tire using Ninja Flex. That's the brand of TPU, the flexible filament I'm using, and then attached the tire to the wheel. I'm going for a tight fit here, um, so I had to uh, scale it down a few times to get it to give me that perfect fit. And I'm hoping this will give me a nice grip on the floor. I um, haven't tested it yet, but we'll see. Okay, next I attach the wheel to the hub using these M3 mounting screws. And then finally I get to test it by attaching it to my power supply. And it worked. The whole thing spun and nothing came apart. So I'm gonna consider this a success for now. Now the captive nut technique is a great technique to learn, but stay tuned for a future video where I'm gonna show you an even better approach, which is using heated brass inserts. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when that's up. Oh, that's so satisfying to watch. Okay, let's jump into Fusion 360 and I'll show you how I approach the whole captive nut design part of this model. To save some time, I've already modeled most of the hub. What's left to do is to create the rectangular opening here where the hex nut is gonna go in and then create the hole on top where the set screw will thread through the hex nut here and be able to hold that motor shaft uh, in place or attach the hub to the motor shaft. All right, so we'll begin by creating a sketch on the surface of the hub here. And it would actually be easier if I would just rotate this 45 degrees, it, that would make it a lot easier to just create that rectangle because it would allow me to create it horizontally here. Um, but I'm actually gonna do this the more difficult way just so I can show you a few tricks. All right, we'll begin by creating a rectangle, a center rectangle. And I know that the size of the hex nut is 2.6 by 5.5. So I'll enter those dimensions in. And now I have this um, rectangle that I can move anywhere. But as you can see, it's horizontal and I want it to be at an angle so that it comes in like this. The way I'm gonna approach that is I'm gonna create a line from this center circle to this circle here. Let's make it a construction line and we're gonna use our parallel constraints. Now this tutorial is gonna be heavy on constraints, so you're gonna see how a lot of constraints work here. I'm gonna grab my parallel constraints and if I try to constrain this line here to make it parallel to this line, it's not gonna let me do it. It's gonna say failed 
And the reason for that is because of this horizontal constraint here. So it can't be both horizontal and parallel to this line. So I first have to select it and click delete. And once I do that, I can go back and choose my parallel constraint and then constrain that line to this line here. And now they're parallel. As you can see, I can move this around, but it's always going to stay parallel to that line. All right, next I need it to be centered here. So what I'm going to do is draw a line straight up and then draw another line coming in at an angle. I'm going to take both of these lines and hit X to make them a construction line. D for dimension, and I'll put that angle as 45 degrees there. You'll see that it was already 45 degrees. Um, that's because you see this little constraint here? That's a right angle constraint. When I drew that line, Fusion automatically assumed I wanted that uh, line to be perpendicular to this line, so it added that constraint. So um, just another thing there to be careful of, Fusion will sometimes assume constraints and add them in. Now I can delete that, but that's actually what I want, so I'm going to keep it. Okay, now I'm going to grab my coincident constraint, and I'm going to coincident this center point to this line here. And now you can see that I can only move my rectangle up and down on that line. All right, next what I want to do is actually get it so that it is tangent to this circle here. Uh, let's remove bodies so it's a little easier to see. I want it to sit right there and I can just drag and try to eyeball it, but there's a better way to do this. I'll just grab my tangent constraint and make that bottom line of my rectangle tangent to this circle. All right, a lot of steps to get there, but hopefully you learned a few things. Okay, I'm going to hit stop sketch and bring bodies back into view, bring my sketch into view. And now I can just take that rectangle there. I can left click to select it if you're having trouble selecting it and go down and choose my profile. E for extrude and I'm just going to take that, drag it through. Distance is going to be all and I'll click OK. Let's remove sketches. Now I see my opening there. All right, next let's make that hole going through. We're gonna create a sketch on this surface here on the bottom of that rectangle. And I'm gonna create a circle here, make that three millimeters. And I want that circle to be centered here in the middle uh, of that surface there. So um, what I'm going to do is hit L for line and I'm just gonna, let's go to this top view. I'm gonna draw a line um, going from edge to edge Let's make that a construction line and I'm going to grab my midpoint constraint and constrain the circle to that line and there it is. And so now all I have to do is hit stop sketch. Let's bring that sketch into view. I'm going to select it, E for extrude. I'm going to extrude that straight out, but instead of going only uh, one direction, I'm going to go over here where it says direction and go to two sides. And let's bring the other arrow all the way in right through that circle there or that hole and then click OK and now I've got that hole going all the way through. All right and that's basically how I made that hub. So now I can just take that hex nut, put it in here and then thread my set screw through here and it'll attach the hub to my shaft. All right, guys, let me know what you thought of this technique. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments as well. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like and subscribe to see more videos like this. All right, I'll see you next week.